All right, everyone. This one's been a long time coming. Uh, after part one and part two of the thermal image that Shane captured uh, Saturday the 19th, no, Friday the 19th uh, in the deep Ozarks in Missouri, uh, somewhere close to the Niangua River in Missouri. And then I showed up uh, the following day with my drone and captured some things with my drone. So with that in mind, this video is going to be uh, the final uh, third installment that includes uh, an in-depth evaluation of Shane's video. And uh, first I'm going to show you Shane's video and then I'm going to show you the experts analysis breaking it down frame by frame so that's where we're going to go i'm going to show you shane shane's video first so that you can reacquaint yourself with what he saw and then we'll go directly into the professional editor's evaluation and since it's too hard to edit out all of uh, shane's curse words throughout this video i'm just going to paraphrase it with my own words in what he saw what the F is that? Oh my God. I, what the F? Oh, you're not going to believe this. Oh, it's crawling. Oh, there it goes. It's standing up. It's right behind that tree. You are not effing going to believe this. Holy F. Call Randy. And now the breakdown and evaluation by the professional. Okay. This is what I think we're looking at. To me, what I'm seeing here is, I'm playing it backwards now. So look, imagine now, I'll go all the way back here. That's what I think we're seeing. What I'm worried we're seeing, let me put it a better way. So here, I'm at, now it's, it's walking forward, it's walking towards us. So this would be the hump back of, of this would be the hump back of the, of the bear. Okay, it walks forward, 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 it gets to over here. Now, I think it, what it does is, I think that it, it's still, I think it's facing forward and then it looks up in the air that's see see i think that's imagine that's like looking up in the air sniffing around and then like imagine the head still back here behind the foliage right and then it it's going to so it gets a little crazy here all right so here's where i feel like we start to see this now okay So this to me, I think, I think, I think, watch. This is the, if this were the head, the nose would be here. The head would be like this, okay? And see, the, the ear starts to show there. Look, see, look at this profile, snout, nose, head, ear, bodies here like this. It's not, a, it's not as huge a head as, as you think it is. So look, this would be the neck, nose, like mouth, snout, nose, head, ear, and then like the rest of the neck comes back this way. And its body is facing the camera. So it's it would be body facing the camera, but head turning left to right. And like sniffing the air, it started sniffing up this direction, but then it turns its head this direction sniff in that way see look and then it would be coming down on the ground so now the head would be here and then as it moves like that would be like the back of the rump kind of area and then it's now it's moving to this next tree and then what would happen is this is where it's most convincing to me so there it is so look, that would be the nose see right here would be the nose and it kind of looks up this, it goes up this way. Now, I'm, what I'm saying is you, it's hard to see what this is. We don't know what's in front of it, but it's like it comes up this way and then the nose is gonna be back here and like sniffing up to see what's up in this tree like this, okay? 
So it's going to go up. Now look, this would be the forearm. This would be like the bicep area, almost, right? Like it's almost now, it's almost like in a squatted position this way. And it's going to take its paw and put it on, or like imagine now this is this little hand, arm this way, this would be its like bicep area. And what it's doing is it's back here, the head would be obscured by the tree like this way, as it's snipping up in the air. And this is where it gets most concerning for me. See, this looks to me like, like again, arm, forearm, the back here would be like the back of its butt and stuff. Its head is behind the tree. And then look, this is the part that really, uh, look, so like arm, uh, bicep, forearm, leg, and then the head's going to come this way and drop down. See that motion? Almost looks like a hammer. See how it looks? See how the, that's long? Like this would be the nose. That would be the ear back here. And watch how the arm, which is still like using the tree to lift it up. Watch how it, see, like you can almost see the whole shape of it when you imagine how it's all connected coming down like that, see? And it's still like holding on like a little paw right here, holding on to the tree to, to get up into the tree and sniff. See, so it's this, I'm going backwards now and I'm going forward and it's gonna, see? Right there, man, that looks so much like a bear head to me. And look, you can almost see how the whole body going back this way towards it, this were the butt and the leg. You don't see how the whole body moves in this with this thing, watch. Like that, coming back down, and then it lets go of the tree. And then watch, it'll kind of mosey off this direction. So now this would be its this would be its butt. This would be the hump of its back. And its head would be over here somewhere as it's walking this direction. So it's walking this direction. And it really moves. I'm moving in slow motion right now. But now if I go back and I just kind of do this in regular motion, and it also has sort of bear-like motion. So as look, see, it's sort of, it's, again, I'm sorry, it's a little, see how it kind of goes up in the air and sniffs a little bit. And then it just, this is regular motion, drops down. And this is the part, look, it just kind of moseys forward. One more time on this, though. This is really, to me, the... And ladies and gentlemen, if you've stayed with us this long and gotten through all the two previous videos about this, what we thought was an exciting, exciting two nights, uh, you understand that this feels like a dagger in the heart to us. Because I even mentioned while I was flying the drone at times trying to identify what I was trailing with the drone that I even mentioned. I know we're hoping that it's what we're looking for, and, and so I so I reiterated that several times. Where don't know what it is, but you know I'm hoping that it's a Bigfoot, and therein lies what we're going to have to segue into in this discussion. I do hope that you stay with this video and watch it to the end, because what what I'm going to talk about next and show you is probably more important than anything else that you've seen and that is the group dynamics when when there's a group of people out on a bigfoot encounter or on a bigfoot outing or a bigfoot camp out yeah almost a hundred percent of the time you're going to come back with bigfoot stories because it's in the air you 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 want there to be bigfoots every noise becomes a bigfoot you know, and, and we're also going to have to address a couple of things throughout. You know, you may have to go back and reference the two videos before to listen to how things unfolded as they were happening and and catch the dynamics, the group dynamics. But there was an excitement in the air. Uh, you know, uh, people were excited. Uh, they were caught up in the moment. It, it made everything exciting. It was what, you know, it was what they were there for. 
And so then kicks in the group dynamics where everybody feeds off each other and nobody has a critical mind. And, and Shane and I were caught up in that too. Absolutely. Shane and I were in that. We were at the top of it. I mean, I, I was sold that, 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 that we were looking at uh, our target species with thermals. So this, this really drives home how we need to be more critical. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a video. Well, first I'm going to show pictures. Uh, you know, you're going to see all these pictures of just the the excitement in in the atmosphere of people of the few people who were left when I woke up the next morning. Uh, but now uh, I'm going to let you hear my daughter Chelsea, who's I've done a couple of videos with her. Uh, she's a behavioral specialist with people and, uh, you know, a therapy in therapy. So she is going to give her assessment. So I hope that you follow through and, and listen to, the, to what's being said here, because it's important that we do a better job and uh, policing everything that we think is Bigfoot out there from tree knocks. You know, somebody reported hearing two tree knocks. That's why I sent the drone above a cluster of people sitting on the wagon road. They said they heard two knocks. So feeding on that, and so did they really hear knocks? I mean, clearly Shane and, and Mary and, and Tara heard popping in the brush for him to look in the direction with, the, with his camera, and it, indeed it was that bear that they heard. So they did hear something, and then they located something with the thermal camera. It just never revealed itself in the way that the naked eye could see that it was a bear. So we get caught up in the moment and, you know, and it becomes what we want it to be. So, but uh, on the other hand, you've got the, the group of people reporting that they're hearing tree knocks. And so I send the drone up and then, then I find a, a lone figure up there that I start tracking with the drone. So see how one thing feeds on another. And I, and I just wonder how you, how we can, curtail getting to that point so often when you're in groups of people that want to have a Bigfoot encounter and want to see Bigfoot. And so they come back with these fantastic Bigfoot stories uh, at almost every outing. And I'm starting to learn that it, it's, it's most often it, 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 it's not. It's not Bigfoot. So we are going to have to do better, people. So here is I really hope you guys follow through and listen listen to this because at the end of this video I'm going to post all of my thermal drone videos in in their entirety so you can just peruse through them and and search the hillsides for heat signatures and things like that and you know and and just take a look at you know the actual footage from my drone uh, I mean I'm just not splicing and picking out pieces that I want you to see I'm just going to let you peruse the whole thing. So, but that's going to be posted after this uh, session with my daughter. So, enjoy, please. All right. You guys all probably know my daughter, Chelsea. She's a behavior specialist. And we are going to, in light of what happened with this whole video that we, we captured and all of the group dynamics involved, you know, it's time to address the uh, elephant in the room. And that is, you can easily see it amongst all of the people in this whole, whole video. And it's, uh, you know, uh, what's, what's the term? Oh, okay. And so we are going to discuss how... You, you guys saw the whole process okay. and how we, everybody was bought into the idea that it was a Bigfoot and couldn't be anything else. Okay. So, so, so the idea is the elephant in the room is that we need to address a group mentality thought process. Mm -hmm. First, we need to give, give what its name, what, what mm -hmm. name is it where everybody expects it to be a Bigfoot, wants it to be a Bigfoot, so it becomes a Bigfoot. Right. So we can only see things from our own perspective. And we can only see things that we are looking for. If we are not looking for something, we're not going to see it because our brain puts up these filters and it's called cognitive bias. 
we all have these biases. It's like if you were to go to a, an oncologist for something that's not cancer, but an oncologist specializes in cancer and is used to looking for cancer and will be looking for cancer and might find cancer, even if that's not what you went in for, because that is where their bias lies. So um, there's actually a little activity I'm gonna have you do to kind of show how this process works and how those filters can show up. So I'm gonna have you look around the room for like 30 seconds and I want you to try to just commit to memory everything that is the color yellow. Okay. So just try to hold it and I'll give you 30 seconds. Close your eyes. Now tell me everything in the room that's blue. <laughs> uh, I think there was something on the bulletin board, like one of the clips. And that's, I think, all I can remember. Okay, you can look around. There's a big old blue carpet. <laughs> There's a blue sponge. Oh, there's blue stuff on the fridge. Right, blue up here. And there's zero blue clips on the wall. <laughs> there's a blue footprint up there. Blue light. So yes. you can see, uh, clearly, there's a lot, you're wearing a blue hat. There, I'm wearing blue, like there's blue all around you, but that is not what you are looking for. Right. So you could only remember what you were looking for. Our brain puts up these filters because it makes life easier. Our brain is used to operating on habit and experience. So if we woke up every day and had to relearn and reabsorb everything in our, our environment like a child does, we would not be able to function. That takes too much time, too much energy. If you had to get up every day and learn how to walk, we could not do that. So our brain operates by functioning on habit. So if we are going into a situation like this experience you guys had, thinking this is a Bigfoot, all the evidence is going to point you to this is a Bigfoot. And, and it's gonna to, filter. To the point that we will even disregard anything that points to anything else. Yep. And, and the thing is, I say this knowing that, that I'm vulnerable to this thought process, mm -hmm. Shane is vulnerable to it, we go through it all the time. And mm -hmm. the motivation behind it is the disappointment we feel when we go spend all our time and energy out there and come back empty handed. Yeah. So it's almost like you're self motivated to come back with anything. So every noise you hear becomes a Bigfoot doing a knock. Right. Every rustle in the brush is a Bigfoot crawling up on you. Every branch and break. I, I, and the funny thing is, I have to really stay on top of it with my own thought processes and try hard because I think that's what separates me from maybe some other people is I, I, I really do try to be skeptical even though I am vulnerable to that also. Mm -hmm. But I do recognize it in the people around me while it's happening. I see complete mm -hmm. disregard to everything else and you know Bigfoot, Bigfoot falling out of the trees and, and everywhere. And so, so yeah, this, this is a real subject that permeates the Bigfoot community, you can look all over the internet and see that it's a constant mm -hmm. where everybody comes back with vague pictures, vague shadows, vague everything, and it's just Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. And, and I think a good way to counter that and something that you are already putting into practice is really challenging. So even when you are going in saying, this is it, still playing devil's advocate with yourself and saying, Where's the evidence? And when I say evidence, I mean evidence that you can hold in a court of law. Where is the concrete, physical evidence that cannot be disputed? So like with this, AI, like the AI video finally disputed it, where it showed that snout. Up until then, it's still all not concrete enough evidence. So that's really, and I think that is where you differ a little bit, where you're able to kind of challenge yourself and go, is it possible that this could be a raccoon rustling in the leaves and making a lot of noise? Is it possible that this, you know, hole that we found could have been 
dug in another way or by another creature or what how do we make this rather than trying to make the story fit your narrative you're trying to figure out how your narrative fits in so there's definitely that balance and it's really easy when you want something to be true to, right to feel right. like it's true and to, the benefit that we got out of this whole process is in the past, I have thermal videoed a mountain lion, mm -hmm. wild hog, mm -hmm. certainly deer. I've seen a possum in a tree with uh, 12 to 15 babies on her torso. And I can see each one of them's little faces oh, with wow. a thermal camera. So the thermal camera is a good tool. Right. So I've seen just about every animal. I have, I have yet to this moment thermaled a bear. This is the first time I've ever thermaled a bear. So the only behaviors I've seen a bear do is what I've seen on TV and video and mm -hmm. So the behavior you saw with the thermal camera, he manipulated himself into positions up around that tree and hugging the tree and looking around the tree fit right in what we wanted it to be. It looked very, very, uh, you know, bipedal and very uh, right. elusive Bigfoot type behavior that we expect in, in the Bigfoot behavior. So in our defense, now we have that in our repertoire of evidence right. of how a bear actually does behave to, to, to help us in the future. And that, yeah, that's what I was going to say is how awesome is it now that when you do get another, when you get another video, not if, because it's going to happen, but when you get another video to be able to compare it to that right. and see the differences or the similarities. And, and I think since you've had this experience too, you all will go into these next situations more cautious and more skeptical because you, you all were duped by yourself. I know, you know, and the funny thing is, in light of what happened at the 400 with Shane approaching that juvenile in the field, it, mm -hmm. he was saying, if Randy was here with me, I would have went in after it. It was a bear. <laughs> uh, we would probably watch you be attacked by a black bear. Right. <laughs> so, so we might need to pull back and yeah. make sure make sure before we stomp him in there to try to flush what we think is a Bigfoot. Right. If it's a bear, he may not take too kindly to that. <laughs> Probably not. So, yeah, so definitely thinking about tactics and strategies and how you're going about um, those situations. But absolutely, you know, thinking about that group mentality, it doesn't take much to feed on other people's energy. Emotion is energy and that can be radiated. And we are social beings. And part of what happens when we are in groups is that social contagion. And so it can become really easy if there are some people who are just more susceptible, especially to falling into believing what the group believes. And, yeah. you know, when it comes down to the, the, the basic behaviors of people, that all makes sense. Mm -hmm. But there's another dynamic that, that is in most of this Bigfoot arena, and that is there's a monetary gain mm -hmm. to having Bigfoot be around all the time. Right. So unfortunately, and there's things like people like the attention. People love, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, there's people that just, Bigfoots, every time I pick up my camera, there's Bigfoots hiding here and Bigfoots hiding there and they post it and post it and post it. You can't hide the fact that it, it's, it is for attention. Mm -hmm. I like the attention. I like people that say, man, Randy, you really, we think y'all are doing things right. I like that. I mm -hmm. like to be stroked in those ways. Other people will be stroked and just every time I go out, I see a Bigfoot. And I, and I go home and I look at my pictures and I, every shadow becomes a Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. You can't take off the tape. You say, well, you, you, you're not experiencing what they're experiencing. Well, but we also know enough about human behavior that, mm -hmm. that there are people that like the attention. And they're not really looking for to... to find the truth of their own picture because then they would realize that so far I've shown nothing and I don't, I want to stop just short of saying that, but I'd like the attention that I've gotten before that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And that, there are so many variables. Right. Yeah. But it also just makes me think of, there was this one time when I was 19 and dating Alex and me and him and Jennifer and our friend Dylan we all at like midnight went up to Atchison and Alex had a really, he was in the photography, had a really nice camera. And so we went around all the haunted houses. I'm like zooming into all these pictures, like swearing that I'm seeing ghosts and 
all, like I was convinced that this every goes little thing, out the window is that you absolute every little shadow I had convinced myself that what I was seeing was true. Once I fell asleep, got up the next day, revisited it, it was like, no, that is that is not what any of that was. Right. Um, so really part of it too is being able to give yourself that space and that time to process and then go back to it. And I think that's a lot of what has happened with this video in many ways is having that space where it's been analyzed and processed and you've had time to think about it. Yeah. All right, well, this is a nice little clarification on the behavioral side of people that contributed to this happening the way it happened. Mm -hmm. Shane and I are guilty. We were right up there at the top. We should have been the ones, the most skeptical and, and held back until the evidence uh, revealed itself. But, you know, just like most. So I'm, that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm pointing the finger at anybody. I, I was that, that person. Shane was that person. And here we are. It wasn't a Bigfoot. But it was a bear. And uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this, this mm -hmm. ride because it took us, it started <laughs> us up here and ended us very disappointed. But again, I think just remembering what a learning process and what a great learning experience and how you're able to turn this into something that I think is going to benefit you all. I mean, with this AI technology and you've just, you have new evidence now and yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Now I'm going to finish out this video by putting out all of the thermal videos captured with my drone that night. So you can uh, you can scour through it at your leisure or you can skip over it or you know whatever you like. But it's there for you to look at and examine and uh, look, you know, maybe you can find some heat signatures that we missed because I was I was caught up in the moment, you know, watching one heat signature and I might have missed some. So I will put those out here for you to enjoy and I, I appreciate appreciate each and every one of you 